Dean Lodato, thank you for your generous introduction and thank you even more for your great leadership. President Sebrud, members of the board, faculty, family, grandparents, friends, Otto the Orange, and last, but certainly never least, the great graduating class of 2021. Congratulations to all the parents who have supported their children. Thank you so much for being here and there when it counts. Family is everything. And I'm blessed with an amazing wife, Betty, two children, Jenny and Sam, who inspire me every day. And I know I wouldn't have made it to Newhouse without my two wonderful parents. My mom called me her poet with a camera. She was a Holocaust survivor, just nine years old when she arrived in the United States alone. She spoke no English, and she had escaped Vienna with a forged passport. And all that remained of her family's belongings was sewn into her teddy bear. And she even sat on the docks at Ellis Island for six hours because her aunt didn't receive the telegram about her arrival. So whenever I'm thinking I'm having a bad day, I think of my mom on that day, and I realize things aren't so bad. My dad was a chemist and a self-made businessman. He dreamed I'd join the family business. And when I turned 12, he supported me in taking an after-school class on scientific photography. It probably seemed like a good investment for the budding chemist, but the journey of discovery that began instantly for me was a lifelong detour from what dad had envisioned. I was hooked on photography, not chemistry. And dad never quite understood that being a photographer could actually be a real career and not a hobby. But he never held it against me either. He wanted my dreams to be just that, mine. Class of 2021, as corny as it may sound, remember that your family members aren't just spectators today. They're also your teachers. And you'll be glad you stayed enrolled in their course as long as you can. The day that I arrived on your campus, I began a lifelong love affair with Syracuse. I was a freshman when Jim Beheim became the coach of the Orange Men, and a senior when the carrier door opened to an inaugural crowd of over 50,000 celebrating a 36-24 victory over Miami. Marshall Street had a place called Cosmos where you could eat like a king for three bucks and the varsity was always happening. And there was a tiny club that was called Jabberwocky where I first saw Talking Heads and James Taylor. Thank God that at least Syracuse winters were an incentive to stay inside. So I spent most of my daylight hours working in the darkroom. I loved this school. And by the day I graduated the class of 1980, I already bled orange. Still do, and I always will. In fact, I didn't want to leave. We were being pushed out of the nest into a world of uncertainty. I probably felt like some of you do today as you graduate into a lingering pandemic. But the journey I experienced gives me confidence that not only will it all turn out okay, but today's challenges are really tomorrow's opportunities. One of the single biggest lessons in my story is something I learned about myself. Rejection is the catalyst to harden your resolve. Sometimes the breaks you don't get are the best breaks of all. I was nurtured beyond belief at Newhouse. My senior year, my professors even encouraged me to go to the Winter Olympics, even when it meant missing classes and extending deadlines. And at those Olympic Games in Lake Placid, I met with a group of photojournalists who saw my portfolio, and they said, Wilkes, this photograph, it's amazing. It needs to be in Life Magazine. So. I made an appointment to go see Life Magazine. The god of photography was going to look at my work. I was 19 years old and fear and nervousness oozed out of every pore. The photography editor held up my slide sheets to the light. And then he looked me directly in the eye and said, you know what I think of your work? I think you're a cheap imitator of Pete Turner and Jay Maisel. Well, I was crushed. I stood on the corner of 6th Avenue and 54th Street I looked up at the Time Life building and I said, one day this magazine will want to hire me. And when they do, it will be that much sweeter. And a few years later, they did hire me. And it was sweeter because I learned that day that success wasn't preordained. 30 years later, the very editor who had all but thrown me out of his office said, I understand I wasn't too kind to you during the beginning of your career. I guess it hasn't hurt you much. He actually helped me that day. That same year, I was a finalist for the coveted internship at National Geographic, the pinnacle of photojournalism. 
I drove down to Washington, rehearsing the interview all the way down the East Coast. The photo editor was a legend, Robert Gilka, and I remember sitting in his office as he stormed in. So, what do you got to look at? I hope it's better than some of the shit I've already seen today. Well, he grabbed my carefully organized slide tray, dropped it onto his Kodak viewer carousel, which suddenly cropped all my photos square, projected them onto a 10 by 10 inch screen in terrible light. Needless to say, I didn't get the internship. I didn't even get my parking ticket validated. I drove back and my soon to be mentor told me that was the best thing that ever happened to you because you weren't ready. You haven't found yourself yet. They would have molded you into something, but you wouldn't be Steven. Now you get to decide who you're going to be. And that is as important as anything that I've ever been taught and something I want to share with all of you. Feed your soul, and in the process, you'll find out who you are. Inspiration comes through the act of working. Find your voice, and it will frame and focus your career every day forward. I never forgot that day at National Geographic. And 30 years later, I took my portfolio from day to night, and I drove two 126 miles to Nat Geo, and this time I brought mounted color prints. I was determined come hella high water that they were going to see my work in the right light. 30 years and thousands of photos after that first rejection, I was ready to finally become a Nat Geo photographer and an explorer. And I learned that persistence and hard work creates opportunity. So embrace rejection. It makes success that much sweeter. But remember what it feels like to be rejected. Never forget the sting of that moment. What makes you great as an artist is your sensitivity. But what makes you vulnerable as an artist is also your sensitivity. I've been blessed all my life with mentors who have told me the truth in a way that built me up instead of breaking me down. Mentors who recognize their own passion burning in me and took me under their wing when they didn't have to. At 13, a photographer snapped my twin brother and I at our bar mitzvah. We were what's called mirror twins. The world saw us as a unit, Stephen and Donald. But the photographer's photo, by candlelight, showed we were asymmetric individuals. It was the first time I'd seen me as me. I begged to become his apprentice. He relented. And every weekend, my mom would drop me off at Queen's Bridal Center, where I learned the do's and the don'ts of wedding photography. Stephen, he said, they only throw the rice once, so make sure you're ready. Being ready is what it means to be a professional. And I resolved to always be prepared. Some mentors guide you a lifetime, others share just a moment of wisdom. In high school, I worked at our student television station. Our anchor came to me and asked, Stephen, Walter Cronkite's granting us an interview. Do you want to do it with me? So on March 20th, 1974, two 15-year-olds set out to interview an icon so revered that when he ended each broadcast with his signature sign-off, and that's the way it is, America believed him. There was no fake news back then. It was just news. He patiently and thoroughly answered every one of our questions, and finally he said, boys, what do you think makes a good interview? Cronkite graciously broke the silence with, I'll tell you what makes a good interview, being a good listener. If you're a good listener, you'll always know the next question to ask. And that's a lesson I've taken with me my whole life. Listen as much as you speak. There are so many people you can learn from by listening. For me, no one was more so than Jay Mizell. By the time I met him, he was a long famous for shooting Miles Davis' iconic album cover, Kind of Blue, but he still found the time to teach. By example, he redefined the work ethic, yet taught me to be a child again, finding joy by getting lost in the act of seeing and photographing. We should all have a mentor like that. In fact, we should all be that kind of mentor the kind who, by example and osmosis, rekindles the childlike wonder that is the heart of any art form. And whatever you do, don't be afraid to make fear your friend. Whether it's a pandemic, disruptive technology, 
or in my case, the anxiety of being 40 feet in the air in a crane for 24 hours with a camera and no bathroom in sight. Embrace the fear. Harness the adrenaline. Let uncertainty keep you fresh, keep you motivated, keep you adapting, and keep you looking around in wonder. I'm 63, and if what I'm doing doesn't make me a little bit uncomfortable, I'm simply not working hard enough. That's how you make art, by being vulnerable. Art is a feeling. Art is an emotion. It's the act of sharing with people you've never met, the emotional energy of what you feel. And as a kid, those intense feelings scared me. They left me feeling victimized. But through art, I learned it was a superpower. I had to wear my heart on my sleeve so I could let other people feel what I feel and see what I see. Don't be afraid of who you are. Embrace it. It starts with passion. It takes preparation. But when it pays off, it gives you purpose. And isn't that what makes life worth living? 50 years since that bar mitzvah photo helped me see myself as an individual. And I'm still at my best when I channel that teenager who got thrown out of the Time Life building and had to summon the chutzpah to make it a teachable, triumphant moment. Class of 2021, you survived the most challenging two years in collegiate history. Channel your fear. Find your mentors. Imagine, get lost, listen, find your voice by embracing uncertainty. But if there's one thing you remember from this 12 minutes, it make it this. Connect to your inner five-year-old. Find playtime, put down the phone, look around and be present. Remember how to daydream, live your passion, always be prepared and find your purpose. Newhouse graduates, if you can do that, you're gonna love what you do and it will never feel like work. Good luck, God bless and go orange.